I want you to turn with me tonight for our Scripture reading to the Gospel of John, chapter 12, please. The Gospel of John, and we're in chapter 12 tonight. And you come to John's Gospel, chapter 12. Come with me down, please, to verse number 44. John's Gospel, chapter 12. And we're coming down to verse number 44. Jesus cried and said, He that believeth on me believeth not on me, but on him that sent me. And he that seeth me seeth him that sent me. I am come a light into the world, for whosoever believeth on me should not abide in darkness. And if any man hear my words, and believe not, I judge him not, for I am not come, for I, I came not to judge the world, but to save the world. And he that rejecteth me and receiveth not my words hath one that judgeth him. The word that I have spoken, the same shall judge him in the last day. For I have not spoken of myself, but the Father which sent me, he gave me a commandment what I should say and what I should speak. And I know that this commandment is life everlasting. Whatsoever I speak, therefore, even as the Father said unto me, so I speak. And we know that the Lord will add His blessing upon that public reading of His own precious truth. Your conscience tonight is a powerful thing. And in fact, tonight, nothing perhaps can catch up with you more than your conscience. And you know, friends, tonight, for many people, their conscience troubles them. Way back in the dark days of 1974, a young man before us, before he reached the age of 21, before he reached the age of 21, he murdered two people. First person he murdered was a young UDR private. And the second person he murdered was an RUC inspector in a public house in Oma. After murdering the police inspector, on his way to the getaway car, one thought crossed his mind, friend. After committing that deadly deed, do you know what the thought was that crossed his mind that night? After murdering that police inspector, this was the thought that came to him. He said, I'm going to pay for this someday. You know, friends, wicked men have consciences. And that man from that day to this day is haunted by his own conscience. So much so in 1988, 
he was so greatly troubled, he handed himself into a police station in London, confessed all that he did because his conscience got the better of him. You know, friend, God sometimes can trouble the conscience. And God speaks through the conscience. And sometimes the conscience tonight is the channel through which God reaches man's heart and God reaches man's soul. Do you remember in Genesis chapter 3, after Adam and Eve had ate the forbidden fruit, you remember it was in the cool of the day when they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden. Suddenly, their conscience troubled them. So much so that they hid from God. God can trouble your conscience, love. There's people who has committed crime perhaps years ago, and their conscience ca ca catches up with them. Do you remember Joseph's brothers? You remember how they sold him into slavery, and you remember how they bluffed their father, and his father believed for many years about how he, he thought he had died. And you remember how his brothers were down in Egypt one day. And you remember how their, how their conscience caught up with them. What did they say? They said, we are guilty concerning our brother. You see, sir, your conscience tonight is a powerful thing. It's a powerful thing tonight when a man tonight's conscience gets the better of him. You remember Judas Iscariot? Judas Iscariot betrayed the Lord. He came to the boy chief priest one day. How much will you give him and I'll hand them over to you? Judas will give you 30 pieces of silver. Deal done. Count them out there. And off he went. Never cost a second thought. Never cost him that night in the garden of Gethsemane when he kissed the blessed Savior on the cheek with a kiss and betrayed him with a kiss. Never cost him a second thought until one night, and it was a dark night. Judas's conscience got the better of him. And this is what he said. He says, I've sinned that I have betrayed innocent blood. Do you see the awful wicked deed of murder tonight? That awful sin can find forgiveness. Mind you, Moses was a murderer. He found forgiveness. Saul of Tarsus was a murderer. He consented unto the death of Stephen, and Saul of Tarsus was forgiven. God is going to speak to us tonight about a sin that has no forgiveness. A sin tonight that will seal every sinner for hell. A sin tonight that condemns every soul. And I'll tell you something about this sin tonight. There's hundreds of people in the town of Kilkeel, and they're committing it. Hundreds of people in Kilkeel. And many of them are churchgoers. But they're still committing this sin tonight, this sin that will never find forgiveness. Now, what's the sin tonight that doesn't have forgiveness? You'll find it in John chapter 12, and you'll find it in verse number 48. Now, listen to what the Lord Jesus says. He 
that rejecteth me and receiveth not my words hath one that judgeth him. And the word that I have spoken, the same shall judge him in the last day. In John chapter 12, verse 48 tonight, you're going to there, you'll find the sin tonight that you'll never be forgiven. It'll be a sin that will never find the forgiveness of God. But you know the sad thing about this sin tonight? This sin doesn't trouble people's consciences. This sin doesn't play on people's minds. They commit it day in, day out, week in, week out, month in, month out, year in, year out, and it doesn't trouble their conscience. And yet, friend, it's the one sin that will never be forgiven. The one sin tonight that will never be forgiven. Let me say something tonight. I wonder, are you committing this sin? Maybe there's somebody in this meeting tonight, and you've committed the sin for years. And you've sat in countless of gospel missions, countless of gospel meetings, and every time you walk out the door, you're committing this sin tonight. Now, I want you to notice something about this sin tonight. It's presented before us in this very text. Now, here's the sin tonight that is presented. It says, He that rejecteth me, and he that receiveth not my words. Now, that's the sin tonight that is being presented, and that's the sin tonight where you'll have no forgiveness. And that's the one sin tonight that never troubles anybody's conscience hardly. It's the one sin tonight in whom the God of this world blinds the minds from. And they can't see tonight that this is the one sin that signs and seals their destiny to hell. The sin that is present. He that rejecteth me tonight, and receiveth not my words. Tell me, love, how long have you been rejecting Christ for? Long have you been living on this planet, and you've never once received His words? Oh, friend, you might be good. Oh, you might be religious. You might be upright, but in God's divine sight tonight, you're a Christ rejecter. He that rejecteth me and receiveth not my words tonight is the sin with no forgiveness. How many times already have we brought Christ before you? How many times already have we preached Christ to you as the only Savior of sinners? Yes, we have preached to you Christ and His sufferings. We have preached Christ to you and His substitution. We have preached Christ to you and His sacrifice, and tonight you're still turning your back on Him. You know, friend, tonight, this is the sin with no forgiveness. You remember this tonight. You're turning your back on the one that loved you and gave himself for you on the cross.
you're turning your back tonight on the one that bore your sin in his own body upon the tree. You're turning your back upon the one tonight who paid the price for your salvation through the shedding of his blood. He that rejecteth me and receiveth not my words, is the one tonight that's committing the sin with no forgiveness. And you know, my dear unsaved friend tonight, you remember what we read in the Bible? He who spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, and who went all the way to Calvary and there to suffer the shame, to suffer the pain, to suffer the agony, to suffer the sacrifice, to suffer the judgment of God that we sinners could go free. Listen to the text tonight. He that rejecteth me and receiveth not my words. What did Peter say tonight? Peter, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. Ah, but friend, the one tonight who has the words of eternal life is the one you reject. Those are the words you won't receive. And that's the sin tonight that's going to damn your never-dying soul in the caverns of the doomed and the damned. The Lord Jesus says, except a man be born again, cannot see the kingdom of heaven. There's a lot of people in Kilkeel won't have them words tonight. You remember what he says in, in Matthew 18 and 3? Except you be converted, not confirmed, not christened, converted. And there's people depending on a wee drop of water in their forehead. That'll not save them. And there's people confirmed tonight. That won't save Lord Jesus says, except ye be converted. But you know the problem is tonight, people won't receive that kind of words. And those are the words tonight of the Lord Jesus. You go to the good people. Go you to the religious people in Kilkeel tonight, and they'll tell you, oh, that's brethren talk. I will not have that talk. I'll tell you, it's the blessed Savior's talk to me. And the Lord Jesus says tonight, He that rejecteth me and receiveth not my words. But look at the scene that is presented tonight. It says this. It says this tonight. He that rejecteth me and receiveth not my words. Are you listening now? Hath one that judgeth him. You know, friend, Romans chapter 9, verse 27 states this tonight. It is appointed unto men once to die, and after this the judgment. And at this very moment, dear unsaved friend, you're condemned before your Maker. Someday you're going to stand on trial before the Almighty. Because He's going to be the one that will judge you. And I believe one of the first things God is going to ask you tonight, what did you do with my son? What did you do with my son that I gave to the cross for you? 
What did you do with my son tonight who was crucified? What did you do with him? And I'll tell you something, unsaved friend, tonight you'll stand there with not a word to say. But I'll tell you one thing you won't be able to say, that George McConnell didn't warn you. And you'll not stand rattling off a pile of excuses that you weren't told. Do you ever think of that moment when you'll stand before God tonight? And it won't matter, or it won't matter two hoots whether you were Baptist or Brethren, Free Presbyterian, or what you were. I want to urge you tonight to turn to Christ this evening. If you're here not saved, turn to Christ. There's one that's going to judge you tonight, and it's the Almighty God. And friend, that should frighten you tonight. You can be dead tomorrow. You can be dead tonight. And friend, what hangs in the balance this evening is what you do with his son. You're in trial tonight. And you're not in trial before me. You're on trial before the Almighty. And someday through death, maybe sooner rather than later, you're going to be called up to give an account. Could be tonight, dear. You remember this tonight. This is the one sin with no forgiveness. He that rejecteth me and receiveth not my words hath one that judgeth him. friend tonight, we need to sit up straight this evening and take note. He was crucified to the cross for you. He suffered for you. He bled for you. He died for you. Well, there's no other way that you can be saved this evening. And I mean saved tonight from a lost sinner's hell. Look at the, look at the sentence that is presented in that text. He that rejecteth me and receiveth not my words hath one that judgeth him. Now listen. The word that I have spoken the same shall judge him in the last day. Do you know every gospel message you'll hear will stand against you in the judgment? Every gospel message you heard preached that will come up before you in the judgment in the last day. Do you know what we read in the book of Proverbs? Proverbs 29 and verse 1. Do you know what it says? He being often reproved, hardeneth his neck. He being often reproved, hardeneth his neck. He being often reproved and hardeneth his neck. It says this, shall suddenly be destroyed. And that without remedy. 
And in Proverbs chapter 12, verse 25, we read these words. See that ye refuse not him that speaketh from heaven. For if they escape not who refused him that spake on earth, much more shall not we escape if we turn away from him that speaketh from heaven. I'm telling you, friend, here's God's message to you this evening. Here's the sentence presented. Proverbs 1, 24. Because I have called, and ye have refused. I have stretched out mine hand, and no man have regarded. I also will laugh when your fear cometh. And I will mock you in your calamity. The sin tonight with no forgiveness. He that rejecteth me and my words hath one that judgeth him. And the word that I have spoken, the same, shall judge him in the last day. Are you prepared to commit the sin once more? Let's take a wee moment now and bow in prayer and seek his face together. Friend, tonight, eternity is just one breath away. But thank God Christ is but one step away. Tonight again he has spoken to you. Tonight again he calls you. Don't be a fool tonight. Trust him. Don't reject him, receive him. Whom to know is to know life eternal. Father, we just commend the issues of this meeting to Thee, the eternal issues. In Jesus' name, Amen.